you can just tell me a little bit about initially how you got involved in the space program. Well, I was one of those crazy guys who uh, always wanted to fly in space. I remember consciously thinking about it when I was about eight years old. Uh, during the time in which I was growing up, the space program was just getting started, and there were uh, men at that time uh, going to the moon, and that excited me. So I latched onto the program and learned a lot about it and went running to my mom one day and said, guess what, I want to be an astronaut. Uh, was there a certain point in your, in your uh, education that you made a, a direction toward it? Toward that goal? Life in space fascinated me, and I sort of held on to it and to that point where I had to make a decision. Because I was so interested in the space program, I researched NASA and found out that there were doctors who worked in the program. And one of my other idols uh, during my growing up was uh, a uh, African-American physician who was our family physician. And I went, whoa, this looks like a perfect match. I could become a medical doctor. And I uh, knew that one day we would live in space, and what better profession to have but to uh, practice medicine in space. So that decision was probably made consciously uh, around junior, uh, junior in high school, and certainly senior, because I went straight into uh, undergraduate school in pre-med and then left there and, and did a few other things, sort of directing my career towards the space program. At what point did you apply? I actually applied the first time uh, after I had completed my residency in internal medicine at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, I went out to Ames Research Center, which is a NASA facility, and did research on uh, bone osteoporosis, basically how uh, mineral, uh, how bone loss occurs in space. Because every time we send human beings up in space, a fair amount of uh, calcium is lost out of the bone. So my basic research was in that area, trying to figure out mechanisms and ways in which to counter that effect. And that's how I got uh, sort of set up for my first attempt, and that was in 87. Uh, I did not get it the first time, uh, but I did not let that uh, dissuade me. I, I went on and applied again in the next class and, and joined the Corps in 1990. Tell me what you did, what your involvement is and has been with the space program. Well, I'm a, what's called a mission specialist. You can be an astronaut in two ways in the program. One is a pilot and one is a mission specialist. A pilot requires that you uh, go to a military test pilot school and amass at least 1,000 hours to 2,000 hours of high performance jet time. Uh, being a mission specialist requires that you have expertise in, in a math, science, engineering field. And of course, medicine sort of fits, fits the bill there. So as a mission specialist, I fly as a scientist astronaut. Uh, once we're in space, I'm the guy, uh, along with my fellow colleagues who do all the experiments on orbit, we'll deploy satellites, we'll do space walks, uh, and uh, whatever is necessary, uh, we do on board. What would you like to uh, relay to anybody who's interested in getting involved in the space program? Well, one of the things I, I love to do, of course, uh, is to tell my story about uh, dreaming as a kid of being, being an astronaut. Uh, I like to tell that because it reinforces, I think, to not only young people but old people, that if you have a dream, that you should hold on to that dream. And I always like to emphasize that. If there was a, uh, a word that could summarize Bernard Harris, and that is, that, that would be a dreamer. Uh, I always have these ideas about what I can do, and uh, I usually accomplish those things by seeing it up here first. And so my message to, to people is that don't be afraid to dream, number one. And uh, when you have a goal and a dream and, you, and, and that's what you really want to do, latch on to it, hold on tight, and uh, go along for the ride, because it'll be a heck of a ride, and it'll get you uh, what you want in life, it'll make you an successful, successful person, and uh, you will become what everybody calls an achiever. Do you have any comments on the upcoming uh, space station? Uh, a lot of comments, since my job right now is uh, the uh, chief of the training that will go on in the International Space Station. Right now, we're meeting with uh, all the international partners that will be involved in, in the space program, and we're deciding on what the qualifications are for an astronaut to train on that, uh, on, you know, train for those missions, basically, and uh, also involved in some of the hardware design and all that. So I'm, I'm really into, uh, into the International Space Station. 
I'm into it uh, for another reason, and that is I believe that space is our future, and the next step is a station, an orbiting facility that will uh, allow us to uh, have uh, laboratories in which we can do a whole host of experiments from medicine to material science processing and the end result of that is that all the knowledge that we that we learn in a facility like this will be directly transferred to to the earth in one form or fashion and if you don't believe that just look at where we've come from in the space program now where we have computers and CT scanners and and micro miniaturization of computers and I can go on and on and on to show you how the space program has impacted our lives now imagine an orbiting space station, international in nature, with this capability uh, 365 days a year to do experiments on orbit. It is going to make an impact uh, on this world like no other. Maybe just uh, fill me in a little bit on some of your most memorable moments in space. Oh, I guess the, uh, the uh, launch is always a memorable moment. Uh, here you have a vehicle weighs about five million pounds being pushed into orbit by the tune of six, seven and a half million pounds of thrust. Uh, if you don't believe it, uh, that it will get your attention, uh, you're fooling yourself. It does. Get, it grabs you by the seat of the pans and catapults you into space and doesn't let go for eight and a half minutes. Now, a lot of people think that that's a short time. Uh, well, if you're sitting in that vehicle, that is both short and long. Uh, but eight and a half minutes we're already at 250 nautical miles straight up and about 3500 miles down range so you can imagine the, the power and the force that, that goes into getting us there so that whole experience uh, changed my life uh, once I got on orbit for the first time and released my belt and floated out and uh, looked uh, up at the earth since we were flying upside down. Doesn't that kind of blow your mind? You know, I have to look up. Well, it did mine too. And that was uh, the other uh, memorable uh, thing is to see the earth and, and to uh, finally uh, see what I had visualized and dreamed about all my life uh, for the first time was, was tremendous. Uh, I thought that, that, that I couldn't top that. Uh, and I did on my second mission. I actually went outside and did a spacewalk, which we call an EVA, extravehicular activity. And that was tremendous, to step outside the safety of your spacecraft and walk in space. You know, for every mission, we train about a year and a half, year to a year and a half. I, I call it that you do a dissertation uh, for every flight. And uh, that's, a, that's a reasonable question. Is it worth it? It is. Uh, all the time that we spend in training, uh, it is worth it. Uh, there can be things that can go wrong, and if they do, we are prepared to handle those things when they, when they go wrong. Uh, in space, when you're surrounded by a vacuum, uh, you have to be careful in everything you do. You have to have redundant systems, and you have to be pretty knowledgeable about your job. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I guess uh, I'd like to add a, a message for minorities and, and also for particularly for African Americans. I talked earlier about the space program. I talked about the, uh, the international nature of the space station. That's only the first step. Uh, we'll be going to the moon and to Mars, and all of that is going to cause a tremendous uh, push in technology that's going to affect the lives of, of people here on Earth. We're not uh, training in the masses in math and science and engineering, and if we don't have that training, we won't have the jobs that that will be a spinoff of this uh, new space effort. Uh, the other is economic and, and ownership. We don't own businesses. We're not involved in this technology development. And uh, so my plea here is that, that in whatever way possible, uh, whatever method, whether it's community or individual or institutional, that we need to be about bringing up this mass of people. Because after all, in the year in the 21st century, in the year 2000, uh, we uh, minorities will be about a third of the population, if not more. And if you have a third of the population that is not trained uh, in high tech areas and not able to to uh, uh, contribute to society, then we're going to be left behind. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome.